How much can your life change in a year? I think none of us realized how much it can until 2020. In this episode of Barn Stories, an author reflects on the winter she found herself in a place she could barely imagine the winter before. Welcome to the Barn Stories podcast. I'm Lori Prinz, editor of Equus Magazine. And I'm managing editor Christine Barakat. This podcast features our favorite essays and articles published in Equus over the past 40 years. Although Equus is known for articles on horse care and veterinary research, our editorial mission has always been guided by the bond that exists between horses and people. And each issue has featured a real life story that celebrates how horses enrich our lives and touch our hearts. We searched our archives, chosen the stories that resonated with our readers, and given them new life in this audio format. Longtime subscribers may recognize some of their favorite pieces. And if you're new to the Equus community, These stories will confirm that no matter what sort of saddle you sit in, a deep emotional connection to horses is something we all share. The story has some familiar themes we've heard in previous episodes, specifically looking for an old horse you've lost track of and developing a relationship with a new one. However, it's the context the writer presents these in that made this story stand out to us. Each December, she finds herself reflecting on the horses in her life, and over the course of this one particular year, the unanticipated bittersweet changes that had occurred. When I originally chose the title of this story, it was for publication in the print magazine years ago. I took the phrase December to December from the title song of the Broadway musical Camelot. Some of our listeners may recall the story of King Arthur and Camelot. It's lovely, romantic, and whimsical, but also has elements of loss and longing, just as this story does. We hope that 2020, a year with with so many uncomfortable twists and unknowable turns, ultimately ends with us all arriving at a more hopeful destination. And we think this episode captures that sentiment well. So let's listen to From December to December, written by Cheryl Lyons and read by Taylor Autumn. Each year when winter rolls around, nostalgia wells up in me and the desire to find my old appendix quarter horse mare, Annie, bubbles back to the surface. I had to sell her years ago so that I could pursue my graduate degree. Since then, I have searched for her many times, fruitlessly. I am left only hoping that Annie, who would now be 19, is content in someone's pasture. My longing grew particularly acute earlier this year when I returned to Kentucky, the state where I last spent time with Annie. It was spring, and my friend Laura and I were on a road trip to pick up some thoroughbred mamas and foals, as Laura fondly refers to them. She was behind the wheel, navigating winding roads through the hills of Versailles, when I suggested a little side trip. Following the directions from my foggy mental map, we drove in circles, looking for a tax store I remembered as in the crook of a corner at the base of a winding road into the higher hills of Versailles. When we finally rolled up to the quaint shop, I felt a wistful sense of satisfaction. That brief trip to Kentucky was infused with the good conversation that can only be found with an old friend, the sights and smells of horses, and the subtle undertones of sadness for loss of the mare I had left behind years before. I kept hoping we'd stumble upon her somehow, like the experience of bumping into a friend not seen for years while shopping at a supermarket but we didn't. After I finished graduate school, and just before my first search for Annie, a combination of events occurred that can only be called serendipitous. A recent medical diagnosis had caused me to reevaluate my life's priorities, and I began taking more seriously my dream of owning a horse again. Yet my financial realities, for both the purchase price and the board, kept my longings in check. I looked into adoption programs, but the local boarding fees were still out of reach. Then, one day I took my husband out for a drive in western Michigan's equivalent of Versailles, Kentucky. A beautiful, hilly area that was home to the farm where I aborted Annie when I was a teenager. The barn had been affordable and the surroundings peaceful. When we stopped in, I was happy to find that the same owners held the property, and they welcomed me back offering me a very reasonable rate. The ball was rolling. Just before Christmas 2001, I found myself making an announcement of sorts to my parents over dinner. 
Cosequin is the number one veterinarian recommended joint health supplement brand. With Cosequin Original, Cosequin Optimized with MSM, Cosequin ASU, and Cosequin ASU Plus, there's a formula suited for all horses at any stage of life. Learn more at CosequinEquine.com. When performance matters, choose Cosequin. I wanted to let you know that I did something a bit crazy. Well, basically, um, I bought a horse. He's a young, off-the-track thoroughbred. Yes, really. We've named him Reggie, and I'm boarding him at the McDonald's. I could afford it because I got Reggie for a dollar. Yes, really, a dollar. Laura had called to tell me about the little brown horse who needed a home. Not only was he slow on the track, he needed time to convalesce from an injury. I remember beaming through the whole conversation. Talking with my husband later, I stressed that the horse was only three. I was filled with the happy memories of my first days with another three-year-old, a petite chestnut filly named Annie. We will have our new boy for a long time, we both agreed. Like a child before a first horse show, I could barely sleep the night before I was scheduled to try out Reggie. Laura had told me that his owner, her boss, just wanted a place to keep him in a good home. Though he was currently sound, his racing injury translated into an unpredictable future for him as a riding horse. I just want a horse to love and pet and give treats to, I told her. What I couldn't put into words was how much I needed a horse, period. The morning I was to try him out, I awoke from a dream. In it, I was on a bay gelding who was just right, a narrow horse who moved off leg well, but wasn't too hot-tempered. Before tacking Reggie up for the first time, I told Laura, I know what I'm looking for. It's something I can just feel when I ride. It sounds like fiction, but when I rode Reggie, a very green, off-the-track thoroughbred, it was just like my dream. The ride wasn't by any means polished, and it hinted at many future hours in the saddle ahead, but it was right. And while Reggie was stiff and probably not sound a race, he didn't take a lame step that day. Now, cruising around the indoor arena in another December, I'm barely able to believe my good fortune. I love this horse's canter. Reggie's long stride coupled with the natural three-beat rhythm of the gait create the feeling of riding a smooth wave. We've learned the canter together without incident, no bucking or running away, and continue working on balance and smoothness. Reggie's undersaddle training has been a joy. Things were not always so easy, though. Reggie had a lot to learn, and so did I. His attachment to the herd still makes his ground manners a bit rough sometimes. Annie was tough under saddle and a dream on the ground. Reggie is tough on the ground and a dream under saddle. It's never perfect. But the best rewards in my relationship with Reggie are proportional to the effort, patience, and the time I spend with this curious, intelligent, 15.3 hand bay character. So this December, I express my gratitude for the time I had with the horse who got away as well as my absolute joy in the one that I have now, who is here to stay for good. The path is always winding, yet still green and beautiful, just like those hills in Versailles. The Barn Stories podcast is made with you, the listener in mind, so we'd like to get to know you better. Visit equismagazine.com slash podcast to take our brief listener survey. Thanks for listening to Barn Stories. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a favorite article or essay from the Equus Archives that you'd like us to feature in a future podcast, let us know. You can reach us at equusbarnstories, all one word, at gmail.com. Did you enjoy this episode of Barn Stories? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. Thanks for listening. The Barn Stories podcast is a production of the Equine Podcast Network an entity of the Equine Network.